welcome back to Life as a Tourist. Today I thought I'd just talk to you a bit about 2016, 2017, life goals, education, I don't know. Where do I start? I think before going into detail about like goals for 2017, I think I should more talk about life goals and how much I enjoy education and how much I'm not done with learning new things and I think that needs an introduction of what I've done so far. So I grew up in Germany and I started learning English when I was in kindergarten. <laughs> we had this group, it was really a new thing and yeah I learned some English in kindergarten and my grandpa always taught me a few words in English and a few words in Russian, so really early as I developed this interest in languages. And then in year five in school, I actually started learning English in school. In year seven, in like the German high school, you have the choice of either, or I had the choice of doing French or Latin. And that was a tough choice for me because I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I wanted to learn both. I don't know. I thought Latin sounded cool, but French would get you further. I don't know. And then my teacher, my English teacher, offered this great thing to me. She said, your English grades are quite good, so it shows you you can learn languages quite well. Why not do both at the same time? So instead of doing four hours of French each week and doing three exams in French each semester, you have two hours of French and two hours of Latin each semester and three uh, and every week and three French exams and three Latin exams each semester. Well, most of you will say, why, why, why would you do that? Why would you give yourself so much work, so many exams, just for fun? I don't know. I thought it was a great idea. I loved it. I really, really loved Latin. With French, I always had some problems, but it was okay. And then, in year nine, we got to choose another subject. And this could be a language. So we could either do French or Latin if we didn't do it before, or Spanish, or we could do science or politics or econom uh, economics, whatever. So you can guess what I picked. I picked Spanish. This was my, well, including German, my fifth language. German, English, French, Latin, and Spanish. I loved it. Spanish, I love it. I had that for two years. And then I was done with my German high school. Well, I could have stayed there for another three years and gotten the German Abitur, which is like the German A-levels. But I thought that was too boring for me. <laughs> so I decided to go to England to boarding school to do the International Baccalaureate, the IB. In the IB, you do English, you do another language, you do maths, you do another science, you do some like social, I don't even, humanities, that's what it's called, humanities class, and then you have a sixth subject which you're free to pick whatever you want. So English and math, clear. The other language, I had to do German because I intended to go back to Germany for university, so it was obliged for me to do German. Then my science, I took physics, humanities, I took history, and my sixth subject, I chose to continue Spanish. I could have continued French, but since I only had two years of Spanish and four years of French before, and because I enjoyed Spanish much more and was a lot better in Spanish than in French, I thought i continue Spanish. I'm happy, I'm happy with all of those choices. And then, when I was done with my IB, 
I went back to Germany. Right now, to be honest, I don't know why I was so keen on going back to Germany. I don't know, I was still young, I was scared. Imagine I'd stayed away from home. That, me that would have meant I'd left home with 16 years old. I mean, some people do it, but for me, I wasn't ready for that. I was... I loved the experience abroad, but I didn't feel ready to completely leave home. So I went back to Germany to study international tourism management in English. And in that course, I also continued Spanish as like an extra subject. And I loved that. I love languages. I loved studying in English. I always enjoyed traveling, so I thought learning about traveling, learning about management and everything would be a great choice. But I think it was already the first semester when I kind of noticed um, I don't want to do that for a living. It's... I, of course, I didn't expect to study tourism and then travel the world through my job. I didn't expect that, but I thought it would be more applied. But in the end, it's like any other management job and you're just behind the scenes. You don't really get to see the touristy, touristy things. So I don't really like that. And when I finished that last year, I had to choose what to do next. Did I want to, did I want a job? Oh, wait, wait, stop. Forgot something in between. I had to do a semester abroad. <laughs> And I want to do that in England or Scotland. But unfortunately, my grades weren't good enough and we had a lot of competition within our university and somebody else got the place in Aberdeen and in London. So I decided to go to Spain. I could have gone to, to Denmark instead. Oh, well. I could have gone anywhere in the world. I could have gone to Mexico, but uh, I don't know. It just didn't feel right. I chose to stay in Europe and then I could have gone to many other universities like Istanbul, for example, but there were only two places left in Europe that weren't just business, but tourism. That was Denmark, Lillebelt and Spain, Andalusia. At first I, th I thought, I'm definitely gonna go to Denmark. It's gonna be in English. It's gonna be completely my climate. It's gonna be a whole new culture I get to see and maybe even a new language I can learn. But then that was what my heart said. And then my brain said, no Jenny, you're going to Spain. You've studied Spanish for so many years now. You want to be fluent in Spanish like you're fluent in English. You de you're definitely going to Spain. It's going to be so much better on your CV. You're going to Spain. And that's what I did. I did a three-month internship in a five-star hotel in Lanzarote in the summer. And then afterwards I did my semester abroad in Andalusia and I studied in Spanish. It was a great experience. My Spanish did improve so much. But as I knew before, Spain is just really not my culture and really not my climate. I'm not saying it's bad, but it's definitely not for me. I'm not made for sun and this laid back attitude, no. So, back to where I was. <laughs> Summer last year, I was done with my bachelor and I had to decide what to do next. Job, master, where, which country. For years I knew that I wanted to go back to England, so that's what I did. And I applied for many jobs, great jobs, booking.com in London, great, great, but it just didn't convince me. So I applied for masters, several different masters, and in the end I decided to, tra to do translation and literature here in Essex. Why did I decide for that? It's something completely different from what I did before, don't you think? But my logic was, no, it's not that different. I did something related to languages and culture before, tourism, travel. And I want to continue something with languages and culture. But I want something more applied. 
So that's when I came to think about translation. I thought, if I do translation, I can use my language skills and actually use them in a job. Like, seriously, this is so much more applied, isn't it? And then just by coincidence, I found the combination translation and literature. And since I always loved to write and to read, I thought, yes, this is what I want to do. Some part of me also wanted to do creative writing because I love writing so much and I always wanted to be an author and to publish. But I'm really self-conscious about my writing. And I thought, if I do that course and afterwards, I'm still not a good enough author. And I don't even have a master that I can use for anything else. So that's why I decided against that. I'm still writing. Tell me if you ever want me to show you some of my pieces. Show you on YouTube, show you on my blog. Tell me. So I decided to do translation on literature. And so now here I'm doing translation German English. And I got to choose another language for free and I started Russian. I always wanted to do Russian. Since my grandpa taught me some Russian words, I always, always, always wanted to do Russian. I'm loving it. I'm loving it so much. So, now I've got you the quick background. It's not quick at all. Now I've got you the background. Now we're talking about life plans. I'm just not done with learning. I will finish my masters this year and have to find a job, but that I, that thought is just so tough. I can't imagine working and being done with learning. I want to study. I want to keep up with my German, English and Spanish. I want to fully improve my French and Russian. I want to be fluent in those two. I want to learn Italian and Portuguese. It's just so much I want to do. I want to learn more about modern languages, about Romantic languages. There's just so much I want to do. Maybe even do a second master's in modern languages or maybe do a PhD. I don't know. There's so... I'm just not done with learning and... Like, why would you ever want to work? <laughs> yeah, so my plans are to find a job and maybe do evening classes in French and Russian to improve those and maybe start to learn another language like Portuguese or Italian. Maybe do an internship. Definitely work and earn money and at the same time learn languages. And then after a couple of years when I learn those languages and earn some money, do a second master's in modern languages. Well, that's what I'm thinking right now, but I don't know. I might change, I might change my mind, but I definitely want to learn those languages. I won't change my mind about learning those languages. Just about the second master, I'm not sure yet. Do a second master's, but do it part-time this time, so that I can work at the same time. And then maybe, maybe do a PhD. I don't know. I don't know. So, <clears throat> what are my plans for this year? It's the second term right now, so I have three more cla uh, classes, three more courses, three more modules. I will have to write my dissertation. And then I'm done with my masters. I will have to find a job. I will have to find a flat. I will have to move again. I basically have to rebuild my life and start actually living on my own. I mean, now I live on my own, but it's student accommodation. And now I really need to be a grown up, live on my own, earn money, go work, and yeah. Also, I chose to walk a thousand miles this year as fundraising for charity. I will walk a thousand miles or 1,600 kilometers this year 
and I won't count my normal steps, just like the steps I do every day. I will just count walks I specifically do for this project. I will walk that distance and people can sponsor me and donate money, which will go to Mind, the mental health charity. I will um, leave the link down below. So, what are your plans for 2017? What are your life goals? What do you think about studying? Do you love languages? Tell me all about it. See you! Bye!